Okay guys, listen. In this video, I'm going to talk about pharmakia. Well, you probably never heard of that word, or you might have heard of the English equivalent pharmacy. However, pharmakia is an ancient Greek term that is used in sorcery. And it's not the same as present day pharmacy. Okay? So if you're a pharmacist, you're not practicing pharmacia officially, okay? Well then, um, just check this whiteboard, I've made a few notes, and I'll keep this video short, but I'll reveal a lot of information, okay? So, look at it, and um, may the Holy Spirit reveal more to you where needed. Okay, so let's start with this thing here. Pharmacia is a practice from ancient Greece. It was used by the ancient Greek philosophers, which were wizards, and it was spread around the world through the Greek Empire under Alexander III of Macedonia. The Greek Empire's territory was from Spain till India, so you can understand the enormity of the Greek Empire and the impact it had upon humanity. Similar practices as pharmacia were also used in the shamanism of Africa, in uh, shamanism in um, Asia, and also by witch doctors with the Native Americans. However, pharmacia is more than just, you know, an occult practice, it's a social institution. institution. I'll explain. Because, in short, pharmacia stands for you take some substance, like plants, and you corrupt those plants through chemical processes, and then you give those corrupt substances to humans in order to influence their soul. You use their bodies to influence their emotions. And when a human being takes those unnatural substances because they take plants and um, herbs and they corrupt them so whenever a human being takes a corrupt substance it will have a negative impact upon their health and by doing this the human being is being disassociated from themselves because as a human you are a spirit with a soul living in a body, understand it well. And your brains here are just a machine to control the body, but you are not your brain. You, you see, your, your soul is attached to your body. So your spirit being with a soul and your soul, which is your human programming, is attached to your body. However, when you take corrupt substances into your body, your brain begins to disassociate from your soul for a moment. It doesn't last for a long time, but for a moment your brains, which represents your whole physical body, and your soul, which is your emotional and mental uh, programming as a human being, become disassociated. Normally they are attached, and that's why you can function in this earthly earth realm. But once you take a corrupt substance, you, inside it will bring disharmony in your system and the soul and the body becomes disattached. And when this happens, evil spirits can easily come in and out of you. And sometimes evil spirits enter you and they don't leave. And that's what pharmacia is meant to. It's meant to give people a solution but it's not a solution at all. Because pharmacia is basically it's sorcery, it's used by wizards. And how do wizards practice this? In ancient times, they would take leaves from trees and from bushes. They would roll all those uh, leaves together, dry them, put them around some sheets, put some sheets around them, and they would light it and they would smoke them. And when 
the smoke of the substance enter them, it will affect their their um, the interior of their body and also their brains, and they become disassociated for a while. And in that disassociation, that which could last a few minutes or an half an hour, evil spirits could enter them and they could receive information of the universe and of the social reality that they normally couldn't have. Because when your spirit, I mean when your soul is, the, is disassociated from your brains, from your body, in that moment, in time, you can clearly see in the spirit realm, because normally you can't, because you see through your physical senses, but when you're disassociated from your body for a moment, you can see clearly in the spirit realm, and that's why wizards smoked. Smoking is an occult practice to open yourself for demonic influence to receive secret knowledge. Okay? And the official cigars were big. The cigars we buy today are quite small and you also have the cigarettes which is a more smaller variant. But the practice is still the same. That's why you have many people who are addicted to smoking because it isn't a natural practice we humans should be practicing at all. In the first place, I mean, so smoking was one of the ways to insert a corrupt substance. Another way was by injecting. That's what you do with heroin and some other drugs. You inject them into your veins. You swallowing. That's with pills. You see, you can look. You have medicines and you have drugs. Okay, I in English in. English language, you both call them drugs, but I name medicine, medicine, and drugs, drugs. By drugs, I mean pharmacia substances, substances that are natural. For example, ecstasy, um, I don't know, much of those other crap they sell on the street. And anyway, swallowing is another way to enter a corrupt substance. And you also have the last one that's baiting. They use this often when. Um, people go to witch doctors to have solutions for their lives, they would mingle those corrupt substances in water and you have to bathe yourself with that water. In Curacao they call it Tuma Umbaino, they call it. Well, I don't do that crap, okay, but it's happening. And it's happening in more corrupt cultures worldwide. Anyway, that's pharmacia. You corrupt natural substances because when a corrupt substance enters the body, it has a Im negative impact on the brain, also for, I mean, just for a while, and that while is enough to open someone for demonic uh, influences. And even if someone doesn't have an emotional stronghold, this is an equivalent to an emotional stronghold. So that's why you should never start doing drugs nor any other of that pharmacia nonsense. Anyway, pharmacia was practiced by wizards, both in and outside Greece, ancient Greece. And during the Greek Empire, later Roman Empire, it was spread around the world. However, it didn't become a lasting social institution, as it was in certain places in uh, the ancient world. However, today it is a social institution. And I need to correct something. Pharmacia wasn't an accepted social institution, but it was a social institution on certain places on earth. Also outside of the Roman Empire. For example, with the Papua population in Oceania and with the Incas, for example, you, you had witch doctors that, and there's in certain villages, and everyone in the village, most of the males were practiced into taking drugs. Sniff, sniffing, okay? Oh yeah, there's another thing I needed to put here. Sniffing is also a way of end, taking in corrupt substances. So cocaine is nothing new. It's something from the ancient times, but today they fabricate it in a different, different way. But today, I'm going to press now, pharmacia is a social institution. And what do I mean with a social institution? Because Pharmacia is basically offering a solution to whether emotional or economic or social social pro, a social problem 
However, the solution is temporary and it's not really a solution at all. It only creates more trouble. In ancient times, if you had marital issues, you would go to a witch doctor or um, a wizard and you would explain the marital issues or you would explain the problems with your kids or in your economic life and you, they would tell you, take this substance, drink it or bathe yourself with this and say this spell often it would be ordered either ancient Greek or in ancient Babylonian or you would have to speak a few spells and by doing that you would confirm a contract and evil spirits would begin to work. Okay, that's how it was. During the Middle Ages, pharmacia was suppressed due to Christianity. And at the end of the Middle Ages, Christians began to translate their Bibles in common language because the Bible formerly was only in ancient Greek, in Hebrew and in Latin. But during the Middle Ages, there were Christians that were heavily persecuted because they translated the Bible in common language, especially Germans, that everyone could read the Bible. In 1611, that's way after the Middle Ages, you had the King James Bible coming out. Let me zoom in for a moment. Hold on, guys. And um, the King James Bible was, um, how do I say it? The aim of the King James Bible was to prevent occult influence in Christianity. Because King James, he was, a, he was King James the Fourth of Scotland, but due to request of the English Parliament, he also became King of England and King of Ireland. And King James was also victimized often by witches, and he wanted to end. Uh, the whole thing of witchcraft and that's why he also instituted a new Bible translation in English based upon the official records the official ancient records of the of the Bible so that everyone in the English Empire would be able to read the book for themselves that was the aim of the King James Bible and till this day the King James Bible the official King James Bible Bible I'm not talking about the new King James Bible, I'm talking about official King James Bible. Till today is quite reliable. However, King James was killed for doing this and many others by the Roman Catholics. So be aware of that. However, though to the revivals in Germany, in um, England and other places in Europe and also outside of Europe, like in Asia and other places where Christians began to separate themselves from paganism the principate or the roman empire which at that time was roman catholicism began to lose its power upon the world upon the world politics upon world economics so rome or the vatican decided to come with a strategy to maintain their impact on the world because the vatican was losing and one way they did this was by creating the Jesuit sect and the Jesuits are really the secret agents, the secret soldiers of the Vatican. They also have a military structure in that organization and their social mosque is that they are a charity organization, but that's far from the truth. Their goal was to spy upon the nations in Europe and also the nations in Asia and in the Americas in order to pass information to Rome so that you would know how to manipulate politics and maintain the power of the Ro Roman Catholic Church which is the Roman Empire for the Principate. Like a century later, some of the treasurers of Rome, because most of the stolen wealth of the Roman Empire was kept in Helvetia, which is today called Switzerland. And in Switzerland, you had German families who were the treasurers of Rome. They had to guard the stolen wealth of the Roman Empire, of the Roman Catholic Church. And some of those Germanic families decided to 
join themselves in a group called um, the Illuminati in uh, Bavaria. And their aim was to empower the English Empire so that within 200 years the English Empire would re replace the Principate, the Roman Empire, and the English Empire would be the dominant new world order under Helios, the Antichrist. Anyway, in 1776 this was created and it's really a gathering of all wizards worldwide. So if you're a wizard, you're also considered Illuminati. Okay? Anyway, Rome had the Jesuits and the Illuminati, and besides that, the Dutch Republic, Holland, was fighting wars with China together with England to legalize you know, heroin. Because heroin was used as a medicine, but though to the negative impact on the people, the Chinese emperor forbid the use of heroin, but Holland and England decided that they want to have control upon the heroin production worldwide. And that's why they had two wars with China for it. So you see that as a reaction upon the revivals in Christianity, up with the Christians I mean, the Vatican created the Jesuits, later also Illuminati was created, but this wasn't an initiative of the Vatican, but this was some, an initiative of the treasures of the Vatican. At the same time, the opium wars between the Chinese Empire and Holland and the Kingdom of England. And um, in the 19th century, he also had the Latin American aristocracy who also joined, you know, the Jesuits. And what happened was that pharmacia was slowly being introduced into society as an alternative way to solve problems. However, this didn't become as successful as people believed, because people immediately saw the negative effects of taking drugs. So it didn't last for a while and governments and social institutions began to forbid drugs and fight against it. However, the practice remained, but it remained hidden in the criminal realm. And that's what the international drugs industry is. It's a neo-pharmakia uh, movement. And the only way that you can be active in pharmakia is when you have a contract with evil spirits. You either are a wizard or a witch. Or you have made a contract with a wizard with a demand realm in order to be active in this. Because pharmakia by its very nature is demonic. The first time pharmakia was introduced was not in ancient Greece but was before the flood when the, some of the cherubim and seraphim of heaven left heaven, came to earth and raped and had sexual intercourse with women on earth and produced an effluent that was before the flood. After the flood it was reintroduced in um, ancient Greece and it became a social institution and it, it spread around during the Greek Empire also. During the 19th century it was reintroduced while it was rejected by society, by most societies, which was a good thing because people didn't want to have drug addicts because during the 19th century many people, in, especially in the Western world, had this associated themselves with spiritual matters. It was as, as in the ancient times that the spiritual realm was considered a part of the everyday life. Even if it is in the 19th century, most people in the Western world was became disassociated from the spiritual reality. So it was quite difficult to introduce pharmakia. So how did it become introduced? This way. Instead of mentioning evil spirits and the demonic contracts, people were just offered a pill or cocaine or heroin and they would just offer it just forget to forget to, to their trouble. That's how it was introduced. It was especially introduced in nightlife when people go to clubs, to bars. That's the place where the Jesuits, together with Illuminati and 
those other Vatican missionaries. That's how they introduced pharmacia to the world. In the area of entertainment in people's spare time. They didn't mention any contracts, they didn't mention any you know, spells that you have to speak out, which are a part of pharmacia, but they left all that out, but they did give people the, the unnatural substances. And the thing is, even when people are not aware of its effect, it still have, has the same effect when they take it. You see, when you put your hand in fire, even if you're not aware that your hand is in fire, it, does, it doesn't prevent your hand from becoming burnt. And, it does, and even if you don't feel the pain immediately, your hand is still being burnt. So, when people began to take drugs on a regular basis, when it became a, co a part of you know, the nightlife of the co culture out in people's free time, when it became, became, became introduced, it was popular and indeed people did experience the quick pleasures, but the negative effects remained. People became addicted. It's because whenever you take an unnatural substance, it will have an unnatural effect on you that it shouldn't have. And besides that, evil spirits will also carry it around you when you use unnatural substances. So that's what's causing and maintaining addictions. And this was in the 19th century. During the 20th century, after the Second World War, you had the counterculture, which also implied the gay sexual revolution in the 1960s. During that time, pharmacia grew like a disease. Because now, young people in Western Europe, in America, and also in certain other places worldwide, in, in the world, they had more spare time than their ancestors ever had. Yet more, um, how do you say, it, possibilities to go to universities, to go to college. So pharmacia was also introduced in the student life in um, colleges and universities. And that's how the international drug world I know, grew. That's how pharmacia grew in the world and took hold of millions of the lives of millions of people. And um, well, that's it. That's what pharmacia is. And that's how it's developed. It's a strategy of the Vatican of Rome to take control upon the natures, natures of the earth so that they can remain with their empire. And soon, I very soon, you know, the, the principate, the Roman Empire will be removed by the New World Order and Helios, which is Alexander Macedonia, the Nephilim will take back his place on earth. He will, he will rule for a while. Great tribulation, and afterwards you'll have the second coming of Jesus Christ. Anyway, understand this well. You cannot fight the issue of drugs by using police officers, by using prisons, by using, you know, force. You cannot also, per, you know, fight against this by using education. You can't because it's a spiritual issue and if it's a spiritual spiritual issue that manifests itself in economics in social relationships in marriages and in in, in, in the mental lives of people so if you fight with force you're fighting the wrong way you're only dealing with symptoms and in dealing with symptoms you're making more victims than in, that you're preventing harm so how many people has, have died in the war on drugs? You see, the way to fight that this whole drugs issue is spiritual. First of all, in every area in the world, you have Jesuits and you know wizards active. And if you if someone wants to become active in pharmacia, they need to make a contract with um, such people. However, in certain areas in the world, there aren't many of those a local, um, I don't see it. You don't have many of those local ambassadors of the kingdom of darkness. So, you need to travel a bit to make such, co such contracts. And that's the truth about Haiti and the Dominican Republic. By the way, the word, the name Dominican Republic comes from the word Dominica. And Dominica is derived from 
the Latin Dominus, which, which, which means Lord or Master. The Dominican Order was a Catholic occult group that was active in Europe. And when Cristobal Colón travels to the Caribbean and re returned back, the King of Spain rewarded him with a client kingdom in the Caribbean. He was allowed to have rulership under the Spanish flag in, upon one large island in the Caribbean. And Cristobal Colón named this client kingdom Hispaniola after Spain. Later in history, Col Cristobal Colón or Columbus died, possibly, the French also arrived at Hispaniola and the French claimed a piece of it. And the French part in the West is what, is, is what later was called Haiti, which became independent during the reign of the Emperor Napoleon, which was also king of Italy. So, Hispaniola or Haiti and the Dominican Republic, it's a center for people in Latin America to go to and to make such contracts. You see? And if you don't have such a contract, if you're not sold out, you can never be a part of Pharmakia. You can never be a part of that world and you can never become rich in it. Every drug lord and everyone in the drugs industry that became millionaires, that achieved political power, did this because he had contracts with evil spirits through those magicians. They went to such witchcraft universities and wizardry colleges and they attended those um, institutions, they made those contracts, they practiced human and animal sacrifices and though to that, and be because they became a part of the Jesuit order, that's why they became so wealthy through pharmacia. Because, because without a, a contract, you won't get in. So if you want to fight drugs, you need to fight it spiritually. And for example, if you're living in Florida state, in the USA, and all the Christians that are living there should repent of everything they should repent from, live well completely in the grace of God, and they should, should use their collective authority upon Florida that they received from Christ Jesus to, to bind the demonic spirits that are active with pharmacia. Because once the demonic spirits are bound in that area in relationship to pharmacia, the drugs industry will fail. If you have Christians in Texas doing this, it will do also. If you have Christians in, you know, Tokyo, Japan doing this, it, the drugs industry will fail there. You see, the only solution to the drugs industry to the international drug problem is by using the authority and the blood of the Lord Jesus. There's no other solution, guys. And um, for you out there who are police officers, you know, don't even think about going undercover in the drug world. Don't do that. If you have to lose your job, then lose your job. I'm telling you why. Because once you become involved in the social relationships that are related to pharmacia, it won't take long before those dealers will tell their superiors and those superiors will give the information to the Demon Dominican wizards. And the Dominican wizards are going through their archives to see whether this new guy in the game has made a contract. And they will go through and they will find out you didn't make any contracts, neither did you attend any of those visitory colleges nor witchcraft universities. So they will keep an eye on you and they will and they will and they, I'm meaning the Dominican wizards and the whole, you know, and all those organizations in the pharmacia, they will go on after your life, find out where your children are, your wife is, or who your friends are, where you work, they will find out everything about you. And they will begin to, uh, to harass you and assassinate the people around you. Pro and me, probably they will even kill you also. Because when you aren't sold out 
to the devil when if you don't have a demonic contract you cannot practice pharmakia nor you can be active in it you can only be a truck user and an addict okay that's the only role you can have in pharmakia without being sold out if you want to be a ruler if you want to benefit from this from that system you have to be sold out and i'm telling you don't benefit from it because you know it will cost your life and your eternal well-being because pharmakia is a is a form of sorcery and no sorcerer will enter the kingdom of heaven you're going to hell for it so i hope this video has opened your eyes and one more remark i've already mentioned that in pharmakia you need to be sold out before or else you can be a part of it and then um, in pharmakia there is one you know primary spirit that they make deals with and that's the fallen seraphim dada this this one isn't quite you know known in the world but this is a spirit that people in the drugs world make contracts with and there's another spirit which is more you know which is more known in the world and that's the fallen cherubim Belial and Belial is also called Baphomet in Freemasonry and in some places also in Wicca so Baphomet and Belial are the same entity they're the same fallen cherubim many people who are involved with Belial also become active in the drugs industry but the primary spirit of that, that world is the fallen seraphim Dada and um, I just, just wanted to mention that to you guys. So now you know what the truth is behind the drugs industry. You also know what you should not do. That's fighting in the flesh. You should fight with, we fight this battle spiritually. Use the authority in the name and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. And do it collectively. Parents, if you have children that suffer from drugs addictions, Use your authority in the name of the Lord Jesus and declare the blood of the Lamb upon your children. And also bind all demon spirits in your area that are active concerning pharmakia. And churches and church members do that collectively together. When you come in your assemblies, when you come together, use your authority collect collectively. Don't vote for some present candidate or don't expect some, pol some uh, police corps to solve the problem no use your authority that's the only solution to this well that's it and may the grace of the lord jesus be with you and be blessed